at this time. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order, and uh, we do have to make a uh, change to the agenda this evening, so I'm going to move to uh, amend the agenda to add a closed session um, after we adjourn from our Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District. So we adjourn on the second page um, right at the top. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you all. Um, first item on the agenda tonight is uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, <clears throat> can we go, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't bring this up. Is it possible we can move PB 1920 to floor farm to first on the public hearings because of the distance some of them have to travel? Nobody's asked me about that. I just got thinking about it today. Well, we got, uh, I guess so. We've got people from Corolla probably coming over as well. That are for the early conditioning. That's the Corolla. They got to go back to Swan Beach. Um, Let's make a motion. Well, I guess it, are you making a motion to amend the agenda to move that to the first agenda yes. on public hearings? Okay. We have a second. Um, I'll second. Okay. Kevin is seconding. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Mr. Chairman, I thought we were doing a work session until five. Um, one thing to point out, you may want to move new business after that because otherwise the um, I think the folks from the school system are going to be here for Flora, and then they'd have to sit through the other two rezonings just to handle that last item. But so school construction fund. Underneath yeah. business, so we want to add that under uh, under under floor is what I recommend. PB 1920. Well, we could bring that up to uh, new business. There's here now. Why not talk about it under new business? Under uh, Dominion Power. Uh, yeah. uh, under consent agenda is item D. We can uh, we can talk about it under new business. Yeah, as item D. That's fine. Okay. All right. All right. So I'll move to move new business item A, uh, school construction fund request from the Board of Education to. Item D under new business on page one. I'll second it. Well, how about if you have people who have looked at the agenda and know it's after six o'clock? Yeah. There's that. I think if we're going to have an agenda that's been posted to the public, it needs to be <clears throat> somewhat somewhat followed. All right. So how about if we move it to uh, just before uh, public text, public hearings? That way, anybody's coming in for the meeting will be here at six right. o'clock. Okay. All right. So. <clears throat> you have to it. All right. So I'm going to move to move to move that again okay. to uh, um, when we reconvene our regular meeting. It'll be the first agenda item uh, prior to public hearings and text amendments. So you want to move that new business as the first? <clears throat> yeah. So they're not sitting here all night for. Second. Okay. All right. Anybody else confused about the agenda? Did, 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 did you resend? Did you resend? Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark, Okay. Uh, you guys a motion there, didn't we? catch all that? Did, no. did, Bob, did, did we resend the, the first motion and the second? We moved to amend the agenda again. I moved to just amend the agenda again. So rather than rescind it, I just moved it's to the motion on top. Of it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I think we're okay procedurally. Kevin seconded. Okay. So, at this time, uh, all in favor of that? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No, we're ready okay. So, Ben's going to get them straight over there. So, I think it's probably be certainly be a little It's just all. We'd rather do a work session, we just roll right through it and clear all the stuff up. So. Okay. Uh, we all good with changing the agenda? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, first item then is old business. Item A: Consideration of possible adaptation of the annual budget for budget for fiscal year ending Plus. June 30th, 2021. And uh, I guess, Mr. Steinkleather, it's in your court again for however long 
Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to keep my part pretty brief. We've we've talked through some stuff, and I think the the real reason for for moving this item on to tonight's agenda was to have some discussion about the school current expense and capital budget. So, with that, I'll kind of let the board have any discussion they'd like to have. We've got uh, representatives here from from the school system that are available to answer any questions. Um, so I think they're they're ready to to help provide some understanding as to the current expense and capital budget for the school. Great. Well, thanks for coming out. Uh, if any of you guys want to talk, you just need to please come up to the mic for us so we have it captured for posterity. And uh, was there any questions? You won't be able to hear it up here. Come your head. Fine. Requesting some information. I, and uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I had questions and um, and I figured out eventually where the confusion came in. The confusion came in. Uh, when our former superintendent submitted a budget that had was carrying a 2019-2020 uh, title on it. So the cover sheet uh, had the wrong year on it, I guess, and there were budget, there were capital expenses that we thought we'd already paid for that were included back in as a capital budget. So um, it, the more I learned, and I'll be honest, the more aggravated I got because I know that um, that budget was was pushed out on Facebook as here's the school's budget. And if I'm confused, then I'm actually in the middle of this. Anybody that looked at that and was looking at a 2019-2020 budget for the upcoming school year had to be confused. So we were given a capital budget for this for upcoming year as a separate document, and then the entire budget from last year as the budget for all the other operational expenses. Um, as I understood, evidently, and you can clarify whether I'm right or wrong, but that was because without the um, legislature passing a budget, I, I guess the thought was this is the best we can do and we're going to throw that, we're going to resubmit that as our budget. So part of the contention last year or part of the issue last year was there's a state statute that says the school system is supposed to provide us a budget in time to roll into our budget discussions for approval of a budget coming up. Um, I'm not sure which is worse, getting nothing or getting last year's budget with the wrong head sheet on it submitted as this is what our budget is for the upcoming year. I'm not sure which is worse um, because I'll tell you, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out why there's a greenhouse in the budget again. And, and, and anybody on the board have an answer as to why it was in that budget? Because I, I don't think I was the only one that was confused. And, and again, you know, you're inheriting this, um, and we're glad to have you on board. But the level of analysis that, that we've been provided has been wanting, okay? And I'm going to use, and we're not going to vote on this right now, but the whole you know, input by our former superintendent on a subdivision and the school board's support of that, I, you know, he, he's not, to my best knowledge, he's not one of the members of the planning board, correct? So his appearance at the planning board, I, I'm not sure if that, well, at least to me, didn't add any, you know, settling as to we know what's going on because numbers were used for school capacities that, and Mr. Steitletter, have we received an updated school capacity number from the school board slash superintendent um, voted on? This, I don't believe we received one that had an official motion, though, sir. Okay, so we as a functional board are making decisions based upon information that needs to be vetted and needs to be appropriately approved. I know we have a process for doing that. Typically, it's discussed, a motion, it's seconded, and it's voted on. The superintendent sending us or sending out a letter that says here's our here's my approval on this speaking for the board and i spoke to board members who never voted on this so i don't and it, and it may be a school board thing i'm not sure but it, it's not is to in my opinion that's not the way these things are supposed to happen so she's stuck trying to figure out capacities with numbers that we that, that we're not aware of as having been formally approved that That's a, <clears throat> agenda item, Paul, is on the agenda for Thursday night's board meeting to officially vote new capacity numbers by adding trailers. And, uh, Dr. Woods, oh, <laughs> let's, um, if you would, just so we have it, who you are, 
why you're here. And I, I think it's important to note that a lot of stuff Paul's talking about, you just walked into this like a week ago or 10 days uh, ago. One week ago, yeah. it feels so, like a month right now. Um, just so everyone understands, <laughs> you, you know, you're, you're here, but you just got thrown in the back and stuff. So, uh, but just so that everyone knows who you are, please introduce yourself and, and as your new role uh, for our school system. I'm Matt Lutz. I'm the uh, interim superintendent for Currituck County Schools. Uh, took over June 13, 1201 a.m. because I was asked, when do you take over? And that was it. Um, so I came to the board meeting last week, your board meeting. I didn't stick around just quite long enough, not realizing um, fully how things work, but do plan on attending it or some representative to all of our meetings. Um, and then we have picked up running. Uh, we have a meeting here tonight, and then we have a board meeting, which uh, Chairman Etheridge and I have been working hard to prepare for as well. One of these items on there is to validate the capacity numbers by adding the trailers to that capacity number. Um, I went back through, and I have it in my notes over there, but we have, the last time I believe that we approved a capacity number was in 2019. Now, it's come up for discussion, I think, five to six times in between, but that number had not moved. Up since that vote, even though it had been discussed ad nauseum um, in uh, work sessions and sometimes in regular board meetings, but that number had not changed. So the plan is currently on the agenda for a vote for Thursday night. And, and I'm sure you've become aware of this, but we we rely on those numbers somehow to make decisions that impact people's houses, livelihoods, businesses, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I will tell you, you know, because I was at the town hall, you know, basically a year ago where, you know, two weeks prior to the opening of school, uh, you know, we had an epiphany and our schools were overcrowded. I know a bunch of kids registered, whatever, but, you know, talk about drop that one, you know, in the middle of the room. Um, and that discussion, I, and again, I'm going on my feeble memory I think, but and i think it's important to remember we're getting a little little off. i'm sorry we're, we're here we're Good here point. on budget right on yeah. this uh, now when we get to school capacity there's a place for that but not right okay so, so so the point being the analysis uh has been a little wanting right and and so rolling back into the budget okay there's some things in there that um well, I don't know that we have a budget to even look at from the school board again. I, 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 you know, we've got the capital budget, and that's fine. But are you aware of what items were cut out of the capital budget to get to the one million twenty-five thousand? I not off, the, and I'm going to refer to Matt. Can I name them off the top of sure. my head? No, but Matt could speak to those. Okay, and that'd be good. Which items that we pulled out? Okay. <coughs> yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, some of you may, may know me, Matt Mullins. I'm the maintenance and transportation director. I've been in meetings with some of you guys. Um, we have everything listed right here in front of us. This uh, capital budget has been modified three or four times, but this is the final. If you go to Currituck Middle School, there is a energy management upgrade that was cut for $94,500 uh, initially. That's the uh, second or third year I've cut that to try to find money for other things. We have the same school, Currituck Middle School. We had a $16,000 cut for wrestling mats because of the COVID-19 hold on the budget, which reduced our numbers a bit. If you move on to Currituck County High School, we have uh, a clock system that was initially cut at 36,000 and the track resurfacing, which was a COVID hold of 195,000. Uh, an electronic marquee in the front of the school versus the old school that uh, marquee that we put letters on and lights up at 25,000. What are you looking at? Yes. Those are already there. Okay. Well, I was just going, I was just going through everything. Just to clarify. The reductions, so there, we did two different pieces. Yes. Um, we had one, we originally were going to get set and move the budget for 1.4 million. Mm -hmm. And then when like, we were asked to reduce that by 400,000, is that the, the number? You want to know that 400? We, we know, we, we got what we 
the initial cut. The initial cuts. I was just curious what items okay. w that were cut to get us Thank down. Thank you for clarifying. So, got okay, it. we put okay. it there. Yeah, so got it, got it. Wrestling mass at 16,000. Yep. Track at 195. Uh, middle school, $16,000 wrestling mass again. And next page. Ninety-seven thousand dollars for building AC unit replacements for the A building at JP Knapp. Uh, HVAC units at the central office for twenty thousand dollars, and a truck for the technology department at thirty-four five. That came up. Can I clarify the truck? Sure. The, the truck is the so we can put a pallet in the back. If we have four man, we did not have a truck. Be able to move the equipment out and go in the back of the truck, making things more efficient. And easy. That, that's why the truck is there rather than the van, which we use. We have four vans for that. We have about 20 <coughs> employees drives this car currently. And thus, we can save more money by not paying an employee reimbursement on his mileage, but actually having a truck. Okay, that's a lot. If you would use a, a, a larger truck for pallets, where do you want? You would use that truck for pallets regularly? I'm not sure how often I have to ask the tech director. Okay. Do the, um, do the vans, any of the vans, like, come with, like, a trailer hitch or something? Just, I mean, I know, like I said, a lot of times they were talking about, I guess, last time, it, it, to be enclosed. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, they have to carry some computers or something, whatever, if they've got rain <coughs> against the storm right now. Was that, was that something they were looking at, Matt? They never, they the reason that I know they would back up some of my trucks. Yeah, I knew that. Out of the maintenance department, the school system trucks out of the maintenance department on sunny days to carry the large smart boards that can't fit in the back of the van. Mm -hmm. So they've been doing it in, in good weather, but an enclosed trailer might work, uh, a higher van might work, but they, they just requested the truck because they had started borrowing trucks from my department and then the individual didn't have a truck, so he and he was using his own vehicle. So they figured it killed two birds with one stone. I got you. So by having these discussions, like when you question it, it actually adds a little bit of light to why there would be a confusion. So one of the things we have going on right now is our smart boards, that technology, they're they're starting to fail there at the end of their life. We're replacing those. They're all over the district. So that need is right in front of us and it they're they're gradually fading out. And that's why this is seems to go, okay, why do we need this? We didn't need it before. Because technology, we're not backing off of the technology, but at the same time, that tech, the old technology has failed. And so that, I understand why the question is, why do we do this? And so we're, I'm unaware just now that we're transporting these on Sundays in good weather so we get them in the buildings. That's probably not the most efficient thing. Or during the week. Or during the week. I, or during the week. Either way, it, it, our technology department given the amount of technology that goes in and out and things going on there, they feel that that would be a great, it would be a need in our department. So the Promethean boards are, they're large. They're, they're, they're big. Yeah. But <clears throat> after those are finished, what's the need for the bigger truck then and then? Well, they're going to have to get more of those because they use those all the time. <clears throat> it's either a truck or a van. I mean, they're, 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 they're a short one vehicle for one employee, so We'd take the van. Yeah, it seems like a walk I mean, van as a yeah, It's five employees. We we just have uh, five employees covering the, the ten schools, and given that every child, at, hopefully after this year, each one of them is going to have a device. Finally, our elementary teachers receive devices this year, and so the amount of travel and work that they have to do, interacting with across the board, uh, the need is there. Okay. Because I had raised the issue about an enclosed trailer. Would that not be more efficient? It would solve one issue, but not the issue of the lacking of a vehicle for an employee. But yes, it would resolve the, the weather for the Indian issue. Is for the the technology. Right. Sandy Grant's our tech director, asked if she should attend. I said, no, I think you're fine. <laughs> well, that, that, because it explains, you know, why the truck, because it was a little confusing it when it was originally presented yeah. to us. The, I mean, I, I get it, the smart yeah. boards. But Owen's question is, you know, okay, after this year, what are we doing? And, and you know, at the end of the day, 
um, how you manage the fleet and stuff like that. That's the school's job, not ours. But trying to understand, because we couldn't tell if it was a flatbed truck that was necessary. I mean, it was a little confusing. So I, I've got my questions answered on there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, one of the things that this, the Board of Commissioners uh, sponsored was an evergreen study that looked at some of the expenditures. One of the issues that they brought up and uh, identified categorically was the two assistant superintendents, and their recommendation was to reduce that to one. Um, now, ironically, we're at one. Um, has any thought been given to adopting the recommendations of the Evergreen Report? Are you aware? Uh, that has not been an internal discussion in the last week. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I would call, I'd, I'd rather have a Can you come up to the microphone or else it won't be on so, the record? I, Karen would like me to explain the roles of the, the assistant superintendents. I was one of the assistant superintendents. Renee Dowdy was the other assistant superintendent. Um, we, we really need to oversee the, the buildings in terms of curriculum, professional development, title, uh, federal programs, and a multitude of others. Both really are the duties of assistant superintendents. The point of contention was that there were two assistant superintendents when one could have possibly been an executive director of education overseeing a certain number. Uh, moving forward, um, currently I'm an interim, and so if, this, if, if I remain in the role, that opportunity to remove an assistant superintendent will be there and looking at reconfiguring some of that work and what does that look like. Um, at the same time, that work is the work of an assistant superintendent in most districts, but we do not have the layers of curriculum support or edu director of education or someone that over oversees those programs that most districts have. I would like to, in the future, bring a report to you of the, the, all of the region, the Northeast region, and show the central offices and what they look like and how they support teachers and how they support kids in education versus just saying, well, we have this and we have that. I'd like to actually put something on paper so that you can see it. Um, when we look at um, our central office, it, it consists of Matt Mullins, who does both oversees both transportation and the maintenance department, uh, Sandy Rounds in technology, Angela Rodriguez in food service. There's three right there. Um, we've also got HR. We've got... Um, There's my... You got a... Your finance. You got a waiver back there. <laughs> Thank you. Finance. <laughs> we got to have finance. We got to have Jamie. I wasn't, I'm doing this a little bit off the cuff, and I do not like to walk in to, to this, but I'll, I'll play along right now, and I'd love to know ahead of time. I'll have, I'd ask, I'd ask Ben, if, if, if you have it, I'll be ready to roll. Um, myself, and then uh, Renee, and then we had a superintendent. We only got two people directly related to uh, to directly relating to the schools, the principals, and the students and curriculum. Um, Jamie uh, Miller does the educational service, have to have. So everything that we named were essential services that you cannot do without in a district our size, nor can you really double up. Um, so we really are left with two curriculum people directly, and that was Renee and myself. Um, I have some thoughts as to how we can move forward and support buildings uh, directly with some um, support from central office, but those are some more long-term plannings and not just short-term at this point. That's all I got. That's all I got. Anything else? Thank you very much. We appreciate you guys coming out tonight. So, uh, Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and jumping in the hot seat. Mr. Chairman, the only other um, update, and this, this is a very minor one, we had uh, some questions over the last year about the cost for faxing from different departments. Uh, the fee schedule, the only other thing that's changed with the budget is we just standardize that so that no matter where you go, it's the same cost to fax. I forgot that until today. But. 
Was it the more expensive cost or the? Uh, I think we went with the re to match mirror the register of deeds cost. Our fax cost is not that high. Anymore. Right. Okay. In the libraries anymore. So. All right. Okay. Um. So I guess at this point we just need to. Uh, there's no further discussion about the budget itself. Uh, open the floor for a motion to adopt or with any changes or anything else. This is not the schools. This is our. Uh, there was some stuff in there that the school board was concerned about and that was cutting their capital. But I think as we've talked about, um, we're going to revisit capital money after the season's over with. So. All is not lost. We're just being a little more prudent here and how we, we uh, apply our funds to make sure we have enough without getting too deep into our reserves. Um, and Mr. Chairman, I might add that uh, I uh, had a brief meeting with uh, Tamron uh, this morning and if I understood correctly, our rental revenue to date or for the season is coming in at 10 million above last year does that sound right it's a it's about it's about a 20 right? percent increase Tamar, about, just about 10 million greater than last year okay, since she's here we'll bring Tamron up to the mic and let her actual All right. the, system, the system that i use is quote as uh, key data um, this encompasses almost all of the property management companies currently in Kerala, with the exception of Twitty. But we know that they're on the same trajectory as the rest of property management companies. Right now, for about the next month and a half, we are at 97 to 98% capacity for all room nights that are available. Um, currently, now remember, we're not looking at Twitty. We're about $11.4 million ahead of last year at this time and we're still booking and that's that affects our some sales tax mm -hmm. and oct tax Oct tax but again that's not where all our school funding comes right. from but hopefully all those people are spending all their money <laughs> well I, I, I played i played golf yesterday. and then kevin's getting them on the way home yeah <laughs> to help y'all's budget um no, the, uh, i played golf at the carolina club yesterday with my father for father's day and friday was the busiest June, I believe that they've ever had at the Carolina Club. They had 177 rounds. So, I mean, the traffic. Oh, that's is, sales tax. Too. Yeah, sales tax too. I mean, the traffic is, it's, it's, it's like July 4th. It's busy. Oh, it's not boy. It's, it's ridiculous. So, I mean, like, can't move I'm not going to get into my tangent on the dollars right. and budgets, but the, the numbers are going to be encouraging. Uh, they're going to be huge. Yes, it's very encouraging. Massive. Yeah, well, that would be good. Just say it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll leave it at that. I think we're going to owe you something. At the end. I feel like it's going to be a cake or something. Yeah. If you, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Any more discussion on the budget? Is everyone good with moving forward with this budget as presented by the county manager? If so, then I'll open the floor for a motion. And it's the one that he presented. We haven't changed anything. Except for the fax fee schedule, I think. Except for the, the fax only. fee schedule, we need to uh, change the fax fee schedule. Mm -hmm. I move for approval. I'll second it. Oh. Uh, Kitty, are you moving forward with the fax fee schedule? Does oh, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. <clears throat> One no. Okay, thank you. Um, next item is new business. Item A lottery funds request for. School uh, Griggs HVAC and Central Elementary roof for plate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a, um, a request to um, transfer funds from other other lottery projects um, so they can increase the funds for the Griggs Elementary HVAC by thirty-eight thousand and increase funds for Central Elementary roof replacement for t by twenty-five thousand. Okay. Any questions, comments, or concerns from the board? I know one thing, the AC and the Griggs in the building, I've personally witnessed multiple times where you were in one classroom across the hall from one another, and it was 70 in this room, and it was 55 in the other, and the poor kids had to wear coats. I mean, it's an older building, I get it, so whatever we need to do to fix that, Some I'm baffles. all for it. I don't even buy lottery tickets, but I'll buy them if it helps. That's an easy fix. That's a baffle, right? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> all right. Uh, I know a guy. I'll open the floor for a motion.
I move that we uh, approve the lottery funds request for Gregson Central Elementary. I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, yes, sir. Real quick, uh, why do you determine who's going to do the work? Do you put it out on competitive bids? Uh, the HVAC job was, uh, was a, a formal bid through North Carolina kind of DPI office. I, there's a... Um, they have a school plants department there that actually runs a competitive bid process and and uh, contacts contractors that I've worked with before and they've worked with before to try to get the best competitive price. The roofing job was basically, um, speak on that for a second. The roofing job, Central Elementary School is in three, three sections, uh, center, west, and east. Center and West are, and they're old. They're old EPDM roof, and I think in the planning or the uh, work session with you gentlemen a few months back, I discussed trying to use a coding process to save some money and get a, and get a good warranty out of it, and that this will be my first project with that. I had $150,000 in the lottery last year for the center wing only, but center and West wing are leaking just as badly, so I went out and looked at for coding companies and got two competitive bids on the coding companies and uh, got a 20 year warranty to do the center and the west wing for only about $25,000 more than the price of the center wing would have been on a tear off. So it was going to be about $275,000 and I, I asked for the extra to cover both segments and put me at about 175 versus 275. So that's, that's where that one came in. There's not that many companies that do coding, so I asked for two bids on that, and this company has a, reputa a good reputation. So the state looks for hub contractors in the area? What is that now? So the state looks for hub contractors? Yes, yes, okay. they do. And honestly, on the, the Griggs uh, HVAC bid this year, I expected three or four at least, and the COVID-19 shut me down, I got two. Two and, bids? And two bids, period. Out of out of four or five uh, solicitations on that job. Were there anybody local that did on it? No, no. Uh, the what they know? I, I reached out to Dare County and some other places for contractors because I've been having a hard time getting large contractors to do these projects the last few years because this one included moving some HVAC units out of the ceiling and bringing them down to a mechanical room to get them out of the overhead and make it a little bit safer for my men to work on. So it was kind of a large project of moving things around and building some mechanical room. So it was, uh, it was pretty pretty large. I don't know if it's been discussed in here before, but there are requirements that schools have to follow that are so much more stringent and don't allow us to operate in the same realm as many as you might, you might would, would think. So DPI's Department of Public Instruction there are rules and regulations that we are tied to that we may not always like and actually are quite cumbersome to work through. Um, and I just want to, I was like, I, yeah. when he says DPI, I'm like, DPI yeah. is Department of Public Instruction. That means something to us. It probably doesn't mean a thing to you. But if it does, it probably I thought he said ECPI. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, but I just wanted to you know, just yeah. bring aware that we have those. Matt does a great job of, of bidding, bidding the work out looking for that. But we do have a charge time on like getting local bids at times, given the amount of work I, people can. I've had companies that I enjoy working with that do good work, the, the guys at DPI, they, if, it, if the name registers even close to somebody they've had a bad time with, they won't even allow me to bid with them, so they're pretty strict. So the DPI greatly affects your ability to bid a job locally, I guess, is that? If I point? have a local company that I've worked with and have a, had, and that I've had good luck with, mm -hmm. I will make sure they get on the list that they meet the regulations of mm -hmm. the insurance needs and things like that. So, well, I, just, I mean, I did a million. I know square it's I did a million square foot warehouse. <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm a hub contractor. Okay, but yeah, but that you know. Well, we're learning. We're learning things. <laughs> that's, that's okay. I, I knew which, I knew what I you did, heard, but I didn't, I didn't know on what scale these, you did it. You never see these bids come through that really the uh, the local network too much. Well, when it goes through DPI, it, it's by invite only. Uh, so okay. if it's a project that, is, that <laughs> now I know you can do it on, I would definitely invite you. How are you? No, not, not that I'm asking. I'm just saying I know there's probably companies that 
that locally can do large projects. Yeah. Because yeah. Mike's got nothing else to do right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm, yeah, like I'm not advocating for and my, yeah, right, right, I'm right. for my business. I'm just saying I know there's smaller businesses that can can do large projects okay. in our area, and probably some are hub certified and stuff. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So we have first uh, we have a, a motion and a second, and uh, I guess we've got enough discussion out of that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> all right. Carries unanimously. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, item B, is board appointments. Uh, we have a commissioner nominee to the COA Board of Trustees. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to nominate um, Commissioner Selena Jarvis to fill that uh, vacant spot for the COA board. Thank you. I second it. Oh, Mr. Beaumont seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Um, anything in there we need to talk about this evening, any board members? I, I wanted to. Ask, I did want to ask, and I don't know if Mike did. I know there's some school stuff in here. I wanted. I was just curious, like where the the, um, the citation money, how that. I know it goes into their budget. Does that go into their to their general so fund? The citation money, like for what you for like the state citation. I know the schools get a per percentage of it as they get. Uh, like no, far no, as the school, yeah. like far as the schools, like far as the citations that are written from the state where citations. Where Kevin's side job not to fund that. the schools? No, I, I'm just curious <laughs> of where that, like the, and it's not just expense. I think. Is it would say that it comes in the current expense, and they have to actually budget. I think two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year for fines and forfeitures that come to them. Because so I mean, like far as like you know drug seizures, where we have you know yeah. stuff where they sell stuff. But it's current expense. Uh, we, 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 so my name is Larissa York, I'm the <laughs> finance officer for the school district. Um, fines and forfeitures we have sent to us every month. Part of those um, go towards charter schools. So um, our charter schools that we have students who go to charter schools from our county and we need to pay those, those charter schools so I have to send a portion of fines and forfeitures and a portion of the local expense um, to those charter schools. And then the rest of it just goes into current expense, like Ben said. Um, it just goes into that local bucket in, in order to pay expenses. I just do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Just... Okay, so um, normally I think we get around 14000 to 17000 a year uh, a month. And um, <laughs> the last payment I got was, I think, 4000 And the one before that was 3000 And that was due to COVID-19. So we're down in that area. For the year. June, July will be, will be good. Well, I just don't like to talk about that. I'm sweating. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I know those, like you said, were down. I just was curious because, like I said, it's the, the seizures and all the, the stuff that's sold and all that. I know, like I said, portion. Right. I was just curious. Right, bond forfeitures come to us also. That's Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else on the uh, consent agenda? Can I have a motion for approval? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Second. Second. Ms. Selena, I think we've got you on that one, Ms. Kitty. Might be a tie. Uh, <laughs> any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, this time I'll recess the regular Board of Commissioners meeting and move to open the special meeting of the uh, Tourism Development Authority and uh, the consideration of possible adoption of the annual budget for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021. Is the first agenda item on there? And this is the same budget as presented by by the manager. We just held it over because we needed to have the, um, the general fund budget adopted before we move through this and the water sewer budget. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, move. comments? No questions. Move for approval. Thank Second. you. Second from Mr. Owen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? None carries unanimously. Um, next agenda, Pitney Bowes lease mail processing equipment for Adjourn. the tourism department. Adjourn TDA. This is part of the TDA. This is actually I'm just gonna through TDA. Shut up. And, and basically, this is just for the mail bulk processing. And because it's longer than a year, it has to be approved by the board. Aha. Uh -huh. Seems uh -huh. like we. Uh, you said what's a hefty lease? On last meeting. This is the right. No, this is a hefty lease. Yep. Um, is it cheaper to lease it than own it? Yes, sir. Yeah, because it breaks all and the time. And very rarely will I say that, but once you buy it, you've got to repair it. Right. They well, service the things, that's the, Yeah, and it breaks. Yeah. It services stuff all the time. Okay. Um, well, then I will move to approve the uh, lease mail processing equipment for the tourism department. 
I'll second it. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn the TDA, please? So moved. Second. Second from Owen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. This time I'll open the special meeting of the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District. This is consideration of possible adaptation of their uh, annual budget for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021. Pretty much the same thing. Just same thing as the TDA. Held over to the general fund. Move for approval. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn the Ocean Sands Board? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, at this time, I'll reconvene the regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners, and we will be entering into, uh, I'm going to move to enter us into closed session. Under GS 143-318.11AB to consult with the attorney client in order to preserve the attorney client privilege. Okay, and we'll so be, in we we'll okay. be in classroom B. We'll be in classroom B. So uh, I need a need a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all.